Hi, I'm Justin Stedden from the AR team at Niantic, and today I'm going to walk you through using the copy to aligned functions in the ARDK. We use these functions in order to take the output from our machine learning model for the semantics or the depth and correctly orientate them to the screen that you're using for any of your devices. These particular uh, uh, functions all work on the CPU side. If you were working on uh, a game that requires a lot of performance, you should be doing this in a shader, and we have another tutorial that explains how to do it with a shader using a transform. But for this version, it's the quick and easy one, and what we'll do is it's all one script, and we can put the output directly into a Unity native um, raw image, which makes it very easy to demonstrate. So let's get going. The first thing you want to do is create a folder. Uh, so we we'll just make a new folder. We'll just call this um, copy to aligned. And in here, we'll just add a scene. So we just want a new scene. And let's open that up. And first of all, uh, I'm assuming that you have a working project. Like for many of these, you've already imported AIDK. You've pulled in the examples. You've set your project up to run. And you've tested that it works on a device. If you haven't done those things, go back and look at the getting started uh, tutorial and that'll walk you through how to get to this point. But from here, I'm just assuming everything's already working so we can just jump in and, and get going. So the first thing that we want to do is just uh, set up our camera and add a few scripts to it so that we have a working AR session. So the first thing we'll do is we'll just set this to a solid color and make the background black because we don't need a skybox in this case. Uh, we want to change the coloring mask to not show the mock world. If you have, uh, haven't got that in your layers, just add it. So you can just go into your um, sorry, into your layers here and say add, and just add it. Um, in my case, it's already there. So uh, this the camera is now set up. So we'll need to add in a few objects. So first we'll go for the AR session manager. To set everything up, then we will add in a semantic manager, the semantic segmentation manager, because we uh, what we're going to do with this demo is very simply just overlay a semantic channel uh, wherever it sees it. So we'll just highlight where the ground is in a scene, uh, and, and very easy to do. So add in the, the semantic segmentation manager. We also need some camera helpers, so we need the position helper and the rendering manager. So camera position helper. So we had one of these. Uh, obviously set the camera to the main camera so that it will work. Then add in a rendering manager. AR rendering manager. So now you've got basically everything in the scene that you need to uh, start an AR session and make sure that your devices are aligned and, and moving around. Uh, if we ran this, nothing's going to happen because there's absolutely nothing in the scene. So what we can quickly do is search in the assets for our mock-up scene, uh, which is just here. It's just a little room that we use in all of our demos and we drop that in. That means that we have something uh, in, in the camera so that when we run it, we actually see something. So if I hit, hit go on this, I should just see the room over here. So yep, there we go, and we can move around. So what we're going to do is we're going to tell the mocking system that this area of the floor here is a, a ground semantic texture uh, so that we can just test this in the editor. So what we do is we go into our little mock-up sequence here, uh, just basically click on the ground, uh, so the floor here, and we can use the mock uh, label. Uh, so there is this mock semantic uh, label that you can just drop in here. And this has a, a selector. So you can say, what type of semantic would you like that particular piece of the geometry to pretend to be? So we're just going to say, hey, pretend that that's the ground in here. And we'll write a bit of code that says, wherever you see the ground, can you please uh, draw an overlay on that? So. Again, if we run this, nothing new is going to happen. It's still just going to be the same room, no highlights, no nothing. It's just that there is a marker on this uh, that we can read later. So if we go back to our folder and we create a script, we can uh, start setting this up. All right, so if we just open this up, just on the other screen there. Here we go. So empty script doesn't do anything. What we're going to add into this is a very, very simple uh, setup. So we're basically going to say uh, that we want a to pass in the, the semantic segmentation manager that we added to the camera. So we need to 
do that, add that there. And uh, basically, uh, we're going to need some namespaces. I'm just going to plonk in a whole lot because it says you watching me type. Uh, you can add all of these at your leisure. Uh, they'll get used as we do more things. Uh, yep. Yeah, so we've said we're going to pass in a semantic segmentation manager. We want to hook the update uh, from it. So whenever a new semantic buffer is published, we want to catch that, um, catch that event. So we're basically saying whenever the semantic buffer updates, we want to call this function in our callback. So we also need to define that function. So there's something to call. And we just drop that in. So what will happen here is every time the semantic buffer is uh, surfaced, it calls this function and it passes through uh, information that we can read from the args. A little bit of cleanup. We, uh, as we're hooking an event here, we should also unhook that event so that we won't forget. So just on destroy of this object, we want to basically uh, disconnect from the, that, that handler. Uh, that'll depend on how you're writing your code. But if you had a, a flow where you went into uh, a sequence, uh, you went in and out of AR, so you loaded and unloaded a scene, you could have a, a case where you've got a null object, but the event's still triggering. So that's not great. But if you were just exiting the program, you wouldn't need to care. But anyway, useful to do this. So the next thing we want to do is we're basically saying, okay, we've got the semantic manager. It's publishing information about itself. We want to grab the, the buffer that it's passing and turn it into a texture and uh, save it. So this is the, the, the functions we'll need for that is simply, uh, first of all, what channel do we want to get? Well, ground. It's the one that we said. So in here we've said from the args grab the semantic buffer. Then we've said from the semantic buffer I, I'm worried about the ground channel. That's the one I, I want to know about. So this just gives us the index that we can we can use. So it just converts this string to an index number. And then we have this function here, which is the the crux of this tutorial. This copy to aligned uh, texture ARGB32. What it does is it says go into the the, the semantic buffer uh, system and rotate and crop that image so that it fits the device that I'm using. And it does all of this for you on the CPU and then it'll return it into the, this texture here, which we also need to define. Um, so we just need to add a texture 2D. So there we've got all this hooked up now. So basically every time that this triggers, you will get a semantic buffer returned. It will then uh, rotate and uh, align that and put it into a texture for you so that you can use this texture in Unity directly. So as I said, we just want to display it on the screen. The easiest way to do that is we can just put it into uh, like a raw image overlay. So if we just add a um, variable to pass that in, so if we just say, hey, I'm going to pass this into this raw image here. And then what we'll do is we'll just put our texture directly into that because it should be all lined up and work. So if we didn't uh, use this function and we just tried to actually use the, the raw data from the buffer, well, you'll still get an image on the screen. It will just be sort of 90 degrees rotated and, and stretched, so it will just look wrong. So that this function fixes all of that for you. Um, and as I said before, this is all CPU side, so it's not the most uh, performant way to do it, but it is the quickest and easiest way to do it first without you having to learn a bunch of shaders if that's not what you want to do uh, first off. Anyway, so there's our code. It's all set up. So we'll save this. Let's go back to Unity. And here, just give it a second to compile. Um, Hopefully I've got everything correct. Uh, the next thing we need to do is add this script to our scene so that it actually runs. So if we go to the main camera again where everything else is and we just drop this script in so that it actually triggers and then hook it up so that we know where the semantic manager is and that we know where our raw image is. We actually haven't uh, added a raw image to the scene yet. So let's do that. Uh, in here we we're basically just need a raw image overlay. So you go to UI and raw image which creates this. Now it's a teeny tiny square here, which is not what we want. We want to stretch this across the whole screen. And you have to make sure to clear out all the offsets here for that to work as well. So now what we've got is a uh, raw image that is across the whole screen and it's white. And we can pass the output from the buffer directly into this and it'll draw. So what it should do is just uh, show this room, but where the floor is, it should be white because that's where, what we're telling the, the script to do. So if we then go back to our, our script here and just pass in that raw image that we just made and save everything and then run, we should be good to go. And they have it.
So now you've got uh, the, the floor, which we marked up, and that is being all highlighted. So this is basically working now. All, all that's left to do is I'll run it on the phone uh, with a bit of a fast forward so that you don't have to wait for me to do the compiling and show you that it all works in the real world. Okay, so that's running now, and hopefully it'll all work. And as you can see, there you go. It's detecting the ground and masking that out in the room here. So that's the end of the tutorial. The main thing to keep in mind is, as I said, this is... This is the unoptimized way to do this, but it is the easiest way to do it. So uh, when you get a little bit more advanced in ARDK, it's worth looking at the shader version of this same tutorial. But I uh, hope you enjoyed this and have fun playing with ARDK.